Hey guys, it's Rich Boy J here back again with another video for LEGO Star Wars Talk. Now the first episode was more news oriented, but this time we're going to do a top 5 list. So I'm my friend Garrett here back again, and we're going to talk about our top 5 favorite LEGO Star Wars sets of all time. Now these lists are going to be pretty open, there aren't really any um, rules that you have to abide by, it just has to be a LEGO Star Wars set. So anything that LEGO has produced since they've been making LEGO Star Wars sets, it's all fair game. But before we get into the top five list, we're going to have two honorable mentions. Now, these are just sets that um, we thought were worth mentioning, but didn't quite make it onto our top five list. So, Garrett, go ahead and start um, start it off with your honorable mention. All right, let's see. I should be able to remember them. Let me look at my notes. I had them in order for my favorite honorable mention. Okay. Um, I told you to get this prepared before we started recording. Okay, so my number two honorable mention uh, is the... Uh, Republic Dropship and ATOT. Oh, okay. That'd be my second honorable mention. Uh, it just like it, it didn't come to my top five because it was, it's the kind of set that I'm really happy to have. Um, oh yeah, and the thing about my list is all this my, all my my top five are all stuff I own. I think it's the same for you. Yeah. The honorable absolutely. mention only one of them I still have, which is what the one I just said. The other one I don't have anymore. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, it's like I'm happy to have it, but I never do anything with it. It just sits there. It takes up a lot of space. <laughs> yeah. But it's a really cool. It was like a really cool thing that Lego did that they probably will never make again. Right. So that's why it gets an honorable mention. It's a. I'm really glad to have it. I'm happy to have it, but. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting set because it's really the only time LEGO has done uh, one set with two big vehicles in it. They don't really do even two small vehicles in any sets um, anymore other than, I guess, that recent Vader's tie and A-Wing, yeah, yeah. which is kind of an anomaly in itself. But I remember um, this that was one of the sets that when I was little, you know, it was, I think, $250. And at that time, that was just, you know, just out of the ballpark for any set that I could get as a gift as a little kid. So it was one that I definitely would have really wanted to have, but I never did pick up. But it's definitely a fantastic set. Yeah. Um, I'm honestly surprised it didn't make your top five list, so that really makes me interested to see what you I know. I've talked about those. it a lot, and like, it, like, I, like I said, I'm really happy I have it. It, it was... Uh, it was really my brother's, but he's kind of given me his Lego. Um, and I mean, like, whenever it was like when we were little, any Lego he had was also mine, and vice right. versa. So, but yeah, it was one of those things that we were. It was crazy that we had it, and you know, sure. I've had it ever since. And yeah, I like it a lot, but it doesn't make the top five. All right, so I guess that brings it on to me. Now, my second honorable mention is actually sitting right here on this table. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna get a kick out of this. Okay, okay. so um. This set, like, I think it's kind of biased because we recently did a Scarif mock and we used, um, I guess, between us at least, what, like 12 to 14 of this set to kind of help us build. And I think, like, whenever we needed a piece, whenever we, you know, were like, oh, I need this thing, it was always, oh, go to the Battle on Scarif set and it probably has that piece in it. And there was a lot of useful stuff that we used from this. Honestly, our Scarif mock was probably not possible without this set right here. So that's one of the biggest reasons that I like it. But other than just kind of the, you know, what I can scrap from it, I think it's a really nice set. Um, for what you get, like, it's the only set with the Scarif Troopers. Um, and of course, uh, casting it as normal clothes. It's still a travesty that Lego decided to give Jen this generic hair, but hopefully they'll decide to fix that at some point. But all in all, like for what it is, I think it's a really nice set. Um, it's it was probably the most useful set in our Scarif mock. Has some nice printed pieces, and um, for what it's worth, like it was worth it enough for me to buy like eight of this set. So, I mean, there's, I don't think there's a way I could not have it on my list. This is the, other than like battle packs, I've never bought so many of one Lego set. So I thought, I thought it was worth putting on the list. Okay. Yeah, no, I, that makes total sense. Right. Uh, yeah, I, it is a great set. It came in handy so much. It comes with a bunch of great parts, yep. like the reverse slopes. Uh, oh yeah. You know, a bunch of great grays, which really come in handy when you're working on anything Star Wars related. Absolutely. Even, uh, like, some of the, like, the big tile pieces with the studs on the sides. Like, mm -hmm. those are all really useful parts. Yep. Uh, and, of course, we can't leaves. forget those palm leaves. This is actually the only set that comes with these palm leaves in the olive green color. So, that's kind of one of the things that makes it nice. And the fact that it comes with six of them, really cool. And, uh, I mean, it's not really much more to say about it. It's, it's a pretty simple set, but, like, it, it gets the job done. I can imagine if you're a little kid... And you know you saw Rogue One, and you know you send your you know, parents to the store to get you a gift. Like this is a really good opportunity because you know you have two good guys, two bad guys, and you know a scene to post battles on, and some really cool play features. Like 
there's there's really nothing wrong with the set. Like for what it is, it's I mean it's a really good set. It is a tad on the pricey side. It fifty bucks. For fifty, but. I mean, so that's something I, that you have to deal with. with all right, though, yeah. So. I, I kind of, I kind of threw that out of the equation because I mean, a lot of these, they're <laughs> we want to get into like price for part ratios. They're not going to be oh, yeah. very friendly at all. But I digress. So I guess we're going to move on to the second honorable mention. So what, what wasn't quite good enough to make it on your top five list, but good enough for the honorable mentions? So my number one honorable mention is the original Turbo Tank, oh, original yes. clone Turbo Tank. Oh uh, yeah, it doesn't make my top five because I don't have it anymore. I haven't had it for a long time. Yeah. Um, and also, even if I did have it, I don't think it would make my top five disc because it doesn't it doesn't stand the test of time. I would say as right, yeah, and it it just doesn't compare to a lot of the more modern sets. But it makes the honorable mentions list because it was like uh, it was my first big set as a kid, and like getting that was a big deal. I saved up my money for like the whole summer and oh, yeah. bought it, and like it was the same year that episode three came out, and I was super excited for it. So it really like. The original clone turbo tank kind of defines my childhood lego collection so that's why it gets the number one absolutely i, I totally agree with that um i think that I th- I honestly my favorite turbo tank that lego has done is probably the clone wars one i think that mm-hmm. looks the most like a turbo tank right but that one was also like the first big set that i got and that was really the set that got me to fall in love with lego star wars um, because that was kind of the first one that I'd go and see in the store, and I was like, oh my god, Like if I could ever have that set, that'd yeah. be great. And that actually is a set that I ended up getting. The only sad part about that is the light-up mace window that came yes, with it. Yes, that was the tragic part of it. Yeah. The I, only downside. I, um, I wish I could have it, because now it's the only light-up one that I don't have. But like I took it to my friend's house when I was little and never saw it again. So if you're out there with my light-up mace window, <laughs> still playing with it, and I know you are, return it. No questions asked. I used to use it as a flashlight when I was a kid to go downstairs at night. <laughs> as a nightlight. Yeah, it was, it oh, worked, that's it funny. Was, it was pretty bright. That's a good idea, actually. I yeah. consider that. Yeah, no, I, I totally, totally support that. Loved that set. Great set as a kid. And like the minifigures, like, oh, like yes. Cash Trooper was cool. He, I still have him on my shelf. Like yep. He's like, usually I get rid of older figures as newer ones phase in, but that one's still, oh, still yeah. there. Um, so that brings me now to my first honorable mention. And funny enough, this set is actually from that same wave of sets. It's the original Arc 170 fighter. This set was just so awesome for me as a kid. Like, I didn't have an X-Wing at the time, but this was really the next best thing that I could have gotten. Um, and for many points of me, like, it was an improvement because, you know, you could fit three guys in it. It had the bomb function, but the bomb function was also, like, the mechanism to open the wings up. And I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And, I mean, I remember just as a kid, like, I would just take it around the house with me everywhere and just, like, kind of crash it and have my guys outside, like, trying to rebuild it and have adventures that way. And this was the only set as a kid that I ever got. And I built it, and then I took it apart, and I rebuilt it again because I loved it so much. Um, it just, it was just a really great set. And I know there's been an update to it. And the reason I chose this one over the update was mostly because of like the fun that I had with it. Like I think the update build wise is absolutely better, but the um, the old one it had the bomb function and the wing function. I thought like those two things kind of set it apart. Um, the new one just kind of has the flick fire thing, which I didn't think was as impressive as um, the original one from 2005. So I gotta put that one at the t- uh, first honorable mention. Yeah, I think the I think the only thing that the newer Arc One Seventy really improves is the the front, right? Um, like the front build is just a lot better, and then the minifigures. But other than that, I mean, the old one still holds up. Oh yeah, really definitely. Well. And I definitely like the fact that they use those translucent um, slopes on the sides yeah, instead yeah, of yeah. having the printed minifigure arm on the side. I, like that is. Was it a printed piece or a sticker? I mean, oh, the sticker. Okay, that's what I was about yeah, to say, just I was the, like, the sticker of the minifig arm. Even lazier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like, how lazy can we get with this? That Arc 170 is still great, though. I don't want it to seem like we're... Oh, no, I I, lo- I, have, I have two of them, so... Yeah. <laughs> I don't even have my old one built. I actually took the old one, and all I took all the parts from the old one oh, yeah, to, to make, make one of my right, new ones. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's a great set, and I have a lot of memories with it. Good times. Yeah. Good times. That first episode three wave, man, that's what that's what really got me into Lego Star Wars. That's I was debating so, whether to put the either the clone turbo tank or that one on there. But yeah. I, I wanted the turbo tank because I just I have more memories of like specifically buying that one. Oh right, for sure. So. For sure. I remember this is kind of an aside, but when I got that turbo tank, I took it outside and I rolled it down the driveway and like it just got destroyed. And at that <laughs> point, like I never did that again. Those front and back wheels would just fall off. Oh yeah, dude, you you look at that figure on those front and back wheels would both just fall off. Yep. But hey, that was part of the charm. 
so now we're gonna get into the actual top five list. Um, so Garrett, what what's number five on your list? Let's see how I ordered this. All right. So my number five is the 2012 X-wing. Oh, okay. All right. Um, just because, like, I got that one f- honestly fairly re- a couple years ago. Right. I never when I was like when I was younger and I was mostly into Clone Wars stuff. As I think most Lego Star Wars fans, they go through a Clone Wars phase. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Building clone bases. Clone arms. Coloring your clone troopers. Yes. We all were there at some point. But uh, so I never really cared for Rebel stuff. So I missed out like on all those X wings, like the super old X wings right. throughout. I missed them, and when I really was getting back into it around 2013, 2014, I remember seeing this X wing on like a shelf at Toys R Us. They were selling for eighty dollars, which was more oh expensive than I retailed for. Yeah, and I was like, ah, I don't need an X wing. And then I really regretted it after that because I, I don't know, I, because uh, I had the B wing and the A wing. Yep. And I was just like, I feel like it was like, it's such an iconic Star Wars ship I needed to have. And so when I finally got one, I just like fell in love with it. Like it's not perfect. Right. Like the engines are too far apart and the, the cockpit window piece is oh, like, yeah. terrible. Oh yeah. Oh my God. But I <laughs> love it. Hanging on tightly to that thing. I love it. And I have three of them now. Um, yeah. Jeez, I, dude. I, I'll, I love them. Like, they, like I'm, I'm, when Lego does do an updated X-Wing, I'll probably either scrap them all or try to update them to be like the newest one because it does need updates, but that's, for sure. it makes my top five because I was really happy to finally get an original trilogy X-Wing. Right, for sure. So that's actually a set that I don't own, but I don't know. Um, I was always under the impression that that one was close enough to the previous iterations that it didn't really like necessitate me buying it. But like after looking at yours, I realized like there are actually a lot of things that they changed about it. Um, and it's really cool because, I mean, you get the r 5 d for, um, which is, I mean, I think that's one of the best choices that they've made. Just yes. the printing and the shape of the head, like, ah, uh, fantastic. Um, can't forget, Porkins comes. Yeah, I can't set. can't forget about good old Porkins, um, and then of course the updated Luke helmet, which yes. is really nice to have. So that brings me to my number five, and this one is going to be the UCS Slave One. This is actually the first UCS set that I ever got. So this is what kind of got me into the the hype for the UCS sets because I think initially I was kind of like "Eh, I don't really need the UCS sets I like minifig scale things like I don't really like the display pieces but I think the UCS Slave 1 really captured what I liked about Lego sets um, on a more grander scale because it is a minifig scale ship and I think just the the build of it was really fun and the thing that I was most impressed by was how like strong the internal structure was like you can pretty much hold that ship from any way in any position it'll still hold up um, and of course the like printed uh, the Boba Fett with the printed arms in it just excellent figure I think one of the best many figures that Lego's ever made so I think that one definitely has to be on the list I think you're right that should definitely belong on anyone's top five for sure for sure um, so I guess that that'll take us to number four then what's, yeah what's your number four uh, well it's not the UCS slave one <laughs> it's actually the first order Tie Fighter oh okay so uh, I, I went with this choice because. I, like so to me it's the first it's finally like lego's done a bunch of tie fighters since right. 1999 oh yeah but to me the first order tie fighter is the first tie fighter they finally nailed it oh like, yeah i think it's perfect like obviously like obviously it needs the the lines like on the inside of the wings right yeah but like in terms of shape in the cockpit shape especially oh yes like i think they finally nailed it with the new cockpit uh or the new uh window piece right um and just i don't know the shape of it just looks beautiful like i i like i love having two of them on my shelves and i when i'm at my computer i can like look over and i see them and just like the the silhouette of them oh yeah it's so spot on and even you know like i think uh i I think i would much rather have an imperial just a regular first uh, regular imperial tie fighter right if they had one come out i'd probably replace it on my list okay but as of now with that being the most recent one and the best done it makes uh that's for why it's on my list. For sure, yeah. That was the first of the, like, Force Awakens sets that I built. And, oh my god, like, that was just so fun. I think that's probably the best swooshable ship that I oh, own. Yeah. Like, it, it's just so fun to play with. The fact that, you know, two pilots can fit in there, like, very comfortably. It's a really nice set. The wing attachment is just... It's so fun, just the way it all comes together. Mm-hmm. And the, you, you're totally right. They absolutely nailed the design on it. And, I mean, I would like buy an original trilogy one in a heartbeat i would buy just a set of original trilogy ones yep. if they ever release them in that same style like it's it's an excellent design i could see them you know in five or six years still making tie fighters that exact same mm-hmm. way because yep. there's not much to improve on from like, there they finally nailed it oh yeah absolutely 
So then that brings me now to my number four. And this one is going to be the MTT from 2007. Okay. Now, I think, honestly, this is probably one of the best LEGO sets of all time. Just, like, for when it came out, it was, I think, like, $120. It was a big set. Came with 20 battle droids. Um, of course, the MTT. But then you also got, like, the little uh, transport speeder that came out of the back. You had the function where you can, you know, pull the droid rack out of the front. And 18 or 16 of them could fit on top of that. And it was just... It was amazing at the time, and it still holds up. Oh, yeah. um, I think the most recent one that they made just didn't even come close. And, and that's kind of hard to do. Like, I don't really know how they could have made that design better other than just using more new pieces, I suppose. But, I mean, they just they nailed it with that set. I don't think... I mean, that's one of those sets that, like, it's very rare that you get something like that that is just all-encompassing for a good price and... Um, just really just nails the design of it that well. So I got to put that one up there. One of the cool things about this set is I got one as a kid and I got it the first time I ever went into a Lego store. So that's really how I remember it. But um, that Christmas, a part of my mom's job, they had this thing where like if you sign up um, like your kid and some of their interests, like her job will like give you a Christmas present. So she put on there that I like Lego Star Wars and I actually got a second one. So being a kid and having two of those is like the best thing in the world and I could set up, I didn't have any Gungans, but if I, <laughs> I could try to set up like a Naboo um, kind of army display or something like that. But it was just a really cool set to have. Um, that's all I really gotta say about that. Yeah. No, that, is, that, is a, that is a great set. Like, if, if I've never owned one, if I did own one, it would probably either get highly considered to be on my top five or even make my top five. But right. I just don't own one, and so I kind of excluded any sets I didn't own. For sure. But, See, that's what that's the next one you gotta hop on top of, man. Yeah, that, 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 that one's, one's worth hunting down. I think it's a beautiful set. Absolutely. Okay. We're on uh, my number three. Yes, um, your number three. My number three is the. So this one, I, I kind of cheated a bit. I just put the Jedi Interceptor. Oh, okay. If I had to choose one, I would just choose the most recent Obi-Wans. Okay, yeah. But like, I just put Jedi Interceptor because they've been relatively unchanged. Uh, there's been a few minor changes, like making the droid part actual actually inside droid of it, instead yeah. of just putting the head. Uh, also making the cockpit sit up a little bit more, and also just general stability stuff. Right. Um, but like, I, as a kid, loved the Jedi Interceptor. It was like oh, the yeah. coolest ship ever. Uh, playing Lego Star Wars, uh, the mission where you're flying around yes. the space battle for Coruscant yes. uh, was great. And uh, I remember having Anakin's, uh, back to that back to that episode three wave again, um, the Anakin's original Starfighter. Oh yeah, with the Vulture was, Droid. was great. Good and times, man. That may have been the first Lego Star Wars set I ever got. It was a great one. Um, I remember getting that one, <coughs> I think, for my birthday. Um, it was great, but yeah, and then but up to more the modern ones, relatively unchanged, still the same shape, but just a really cool ship. Um, I love like the different colors and stuff. It's something you don't see a whole lot with Star Wars, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess I would if I had to come if I just had to say one, I'd probably either do either Anakin's most recent or Obi Wan's most recent, right? For sure. And it's really interesting too because I mean both of those sets have like elements that you'd like to take. Like I think the placement of the droid in Anakin's is much better. Yes. And also the fact that he has like a console and it's like a nice sticker and it, it looks good. Mm -hmm. But I think just like the build of Obi Wan's is much better. Yeah. Um, nice, very nice ships. Like I totally see why you'd put that on the top five. Now my top five is gonna be another UCS set. And it's the UCS Imperial Shuttle. I think that this is the best looking like Lego set that has ever been made. Um, it's just it's so sleek. It it's a very like solid build. Like it, it all holds together pretty well for what it was. Like for to, for having like the two giant wings on it, it's just it's absolutely amazing how they're able to get it to work the way it does. And also just the way it looks on a stand. I mean, there are very few ships that kind of have the presence of that big beautiful white bird sitting up there so that was actually um one of the sets i didn't get it when it came out but i found one on ebay and it didn't have like the head area on it so i had to brick link that but i found it for pretty cheap so it was worth it to me and i mean it's easily become one of my favorite sets like i just i pull it down all the time and it's nice too because like while it's sitting on a stand you can pull it down and kind of like rotate it like when luke's playing with the uh t uh skyhopper yeah the skyhopper t47 um, and it's just, it's a really nice set. T-16. T-16. Holy crap. You're wow. Of, I can't... You're thinking of a snow speeder, my friend. I am thinking of a snow speeder. God dang it. This we're going to have to, for, we're gonna uh, have to erase that from the, the uh... <laughs> edit that one out. <laughs> yeah, we have to edit that one out. Uh, but yeah, I'm not surprised that ended up on your top five. I, my guess was that was going to be your number one. Oh yeah. Okay. So I'm interested to see what number one is now. I think I have an idea. You probably, you probably know. Um, all right. So now we're getting to your number two. My number two is... 
Let me look. So my number two is the UCS Slave One. Okay. Uh, I was hoping that was on your list. It was definitely on my list. I'm usually I'm usually not much of a UCS guy. Like you were saying earlier, it's it was my first big UCS ship. I guess besides the Republic drop ship. I think that one is that one a UCS? I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't so know. It might be I have no idea. I'll refer to it as an unofficial UCS. Set. I mean, it, it may as well be. It fits the criterion. Anyways, besides that one, the Slave One was my first one. I've never really cared about UCS because I've, ne- I've never liked non-minifig scale stuff. Right. Um, so, like, things like the Snow Speeder and the X-Wing, while cool and I can appreciate, I've never really been, you know, dying to have in my collection, per se. Right. But the Slave One, when I, f- I was... You know, I saw it and it was like, that's cool, and then you were like, no, you should really get it. And then yeah. once I ended up finally getting one... I was yeah I, did, I just fell in love with it like it kind of like similar to the the Jedi interceptors where it's like the color scheme of it is something more unique and, right oh yeah the and, sand green and, and the reddish brown Lego's version of those colors are beautiful like the the red and the greens like yep. Lego does a really good job with those colors uh, and yeah the minifigures that Boba Fett minifigure is great and oh, it's yeah. just I don't know that slave one sitting on its stand looks ah. beautiful That's, oh I love it what I a love, great set yeah um all right so. I guess, yeah, um, I already gave my two cents on the set, so there's no need for me to reiterate. So we'll just go right into my number two. And it's hard, it's really hard for me to put this one at number two, because I would love to have it at number one. It's totally worth it. But um, another set has taken its place at number one. But not number two is the most recent Republic gunship. Oh, yeah. um, that thing is just a beast. The Republic gunship is my favorite ship in all of Star Wars, so... Um, having a Lego version of it just already, you know, puts it up ahead of a lot of sets. But Lego just consistently nails this set. Um, the play features on it, having the, you know, turrets on the sides, all the places to put troops, the compartments. Um, it's just absolutely great. And, I mean, even while I think the first one alone is good enough to make the list, um, they've just made so many improvements with the most recent one. And then the mini fake selection on the most recent one is just impeccable. Like, I love the fact that you got... A full, a, a full range of Jedi. You get different types of clones. You get Padme. Um, and does it come with battle droids as well? Yeah, I think two battle. Yeah, droids. and it comes with two battle droids. Like, it's... Or maybe not. Maybe I might be thinking of the ATTE. Yeah, that may be true. Okay. Well, I mean that. that... Regardless, the, the Padme, Anakin, and Obi Wan. Oh like... yeah, the, that main cast alone, just fantastic set. Um, that's one of those ones that'll always be close to my heart because, like, as a kid, that was when I realized the harsh realities of Lego and the fact that they retired sets and um, I had gotten into Lego around 2005 so that set came out in 2002 and it was probably it was definitely retired by the time I got into Lego Star Wars and like I would just look online and I would just be like oh I wish I could get this set but it was like $300 um, so I could never have it but um, once I you know finally got one when the Clone Wars movies came out came out it was really special to me and then having the most recent version where it's like movie accurate and you get just the great assortment of many figures like there are very, there are very few sets that i can just like walk into a room at any time and like my eye automatically goes towards it like no matter like anybody's collection if there's a republic gunship on the shelf that's the one i'm looking at first like it's just i ah, love that set that is a great set it is it is one of the best sets obviously i have it on my list i would agree all right, so Garrett, what's your number one? My number one is the Twilight, actually. <laughs> See, I told you if you did this on camera, we we're gonna have some problems. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's the most recent Republic gunship. Actually. Okay, good. It better be. Uh, yeah, pretty much everything you said. It's perfect. Uh, I love it. I was, I'd always wanted a Republic gunship, and that was the first one I actually got. Um, and I just remember before I was able to get one, like I watched so many review videos of it on YouTube. Oh like, yeah. Just like. Like, I watched, like, I think, like, uh, Solid Brick Studios had a video where he reviewed it, and I watched that, like, over and over again. Like, oh, I was yeah. just, like, studying every detail of it, and, like, wow, these figures are great, and just everything about it, like, I love it. Like, the doors that open, and just, it's everything that I love about a, a Star Wars set, like, in having, like, you know, internal compartments and, like, cockpits and stuff. And, Absolutely. Yeah, many figure selections are great. Dude, um, to this day, I will still go online and watch reviews of the original gunship, just because, <laughs> like, it just brings back memories. Like, that was the first, like, Lego set, um that you know i want really wanted but could never get because it had been retired and yeah. buying stuff on the internet wasn't really a big thing at that time like my parents were afraid their information would get stolen so it was always a really like rare set that i wanted and lego has just made that thing absolutely amazing like for such a great ship that i like in star wars canon like lego has definitely done its service by making it one of the best lego star wars sets so then that brings me to my number one and it has to be 
not the Twilight. It is actually the UCS Imperial Star Destroyer set 10030. This thing is just... I don't think there's any Lego set that you walk into a room and you, you see it and just has the presence like that ship has. Um, it's it's just it's massive, and for a set that came out in 2002, it still holds up. Like I don't think Lego's created anything since then that just can match up with just how great that set is and i mean it's it's kind of hard to compare it against the other sets because i mean they they serve it serves very different function than other sets do but i think like for if you look at like what it is the price that it was because i think it was only like 270 dollars and um like what you get and the way the ship looks like i think it is an excellent representation of a star destroyer people are still willing to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get it. So I think that alone shows you just how nice of a set it is. And I think, you know, Lego has done big sets since then. Lego has done bigger sets since then, like the Superstar Destroyer. But even that still can't compare. Like, it's it's a much... Like, the Superstar Destroyer is much skinnier, has a flat bottom. And, I mean, I've already talked about all that stuff on camera. But that Imperial Star Destroyer, that one is just an absolute monster. And, I mean, I'm glad I have one. After It was so weird. Like, after I got that set, it was just like... The hunt was gone. Like, that was the last, like, thing that I really wanted. That was the Holy Grail. And, it, yeah, after that, it was like, well, like, what do I do now with my life? I guess, I guess I'll just build mocks. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, it does, it holds up extremely well. Uh, like, some of the older UCS sets, in my opinion, really don't hold up. Oh, yeah. Like, all. those TIE Fighters. Like that the, original X-Wing. Like, the TIE Interceptor, original X-Wing, the original Y-Wing. Yeah. Well, I guess the only Y-Wing UCS set. Um, yeah, just don't hold up. Whereas that one, like, I mean, especially the new gray version. Right. Like, I mean, it looks like a set that they could have come up with, you know, last year. Like, oh, yeah. It, it, like, looks, it looks phenomenal. It's, like, I mean, a lot of people were mad about what LEGO did with the Death Star and how it's just a re-release of the exact same set. But I think if LEGO just re-released that exact same set today and had, like, a $400 price tag on it, no one would be upset about it. People would still rush out to the stores to get it because it's just that amazing. Um, and, I mean, just to think that it came out in 2002, like, just how amazing it is even for that time and if it's even probably more amazing now because you can't get it in stores or it's more like a rare set um that thing is just i ah, love it there's I, there's only so many things i can say about it like it is i think it's just the, the perfect ucs set like for what it is like all the features in it like ah, it, it serves the job gets the job done all right guys i guess that's gonna finish up our top five list for the best lego star Wars sets of all time i think next time we'll get together and we'll discuss the uh top five worst lego sets of all time and i think i'll have some <laughs> have some interesting words for you on that one so the twilight obviously won't be in that list then oh no the twilight was actually so good that it's in a league of its own i couldn't just throw it in this video i would need an hour long your own video about it right yeah <laughs> the twilight twilight uh review is coming up really soon guys <laughs> look out for that um but yeah that's gonna finish up this one guys thanks again for watching if you like what we do go ahead hit the like button support the video hit the subscribe button to support the channel and we'll be back with more content